So let's move on with uh, Dargo. What, what is your most anticipated game of the next year? Uh, for me, talking about Legos again, uh, it would have to be... A Lego game? Yes, a Lego game. No, a uh, dual universe. Uh, it's looking to... It's voxel-based, uh, interplanetary, oh, inter, intergalactic... Um, you can build anything and destroy anything. The developers have said the only thing that can't be destroyed as a whole is the planet. Like they won't have a, they won't have uh, to take a term from Warhammer 40k. They won't, they won't have planet crackers. Uh, no Death Star. Yeah, no, no Death Stars. Uh, um, I know. So but, wait, what do you mean though? Like anything built on the surface can be bombarded and destroyed from space? Think, think of it like uh, there will be. So far under the, really beautiful. so far under the ground, there'll be a level that simply can't be destroyed. But if there's a mountain there, like and, bedrock and Minecraft. yeah, yeah, like bedrock in Minecraft, right? right um, yeah. But like, uh, let's say, let's say, Francis, you you are an intergalactic empire. You're the ruler, and you have all these active players under you, right? And they're known as the uh, Ajax Corp. Then. And you want a monument of your face, of your character's face, etched into a mountain. Then you could oh. actually say, hey, etch well, my face into this mountain. And, so, and, and it can be done. <laughs> so, but then could someone else come in and just blow up that monument? Or that mountainside? They could if they get past all your forces and all the defenses. And, you know, it, it's... Sandbox. It's an it's an MMO, you know, Galaxy Sandbox game. Wait, it's uh, an MMO. Mm hmm. How many players? Uh, Thousands. They are using a one hundred percent cloud um, processing, and mm -hmm. so there's going to be zero instancing, and they're saying it's going to support millions of players active at once. There was a game I read about recently, and I spoke about it with you guys just before we started uh, the podcast. I, I can't remember what the game's called, but it basically used um, Microsoft's cloud processing service. I think it was like Azure or something like that. And they were able to get like the record for the most people on at, at one point in time. Mm -hmm. And they did that by using cloud processing to process everything. Even like parts of the graphics that people were playing on their phones were processed right. on the server side and transmit to their phones. That's, and that's really impressive. That, was that Age of Ascent? That is? Yeah, it's something like that. Is, is that. is that what it was called? Uh, Microsoft I mean, Azure. Look, look it up. Look it up. Um, I'm not really sure right now. And I'm... But yeah, like if, if they use the similar technology to that and you can get like 100,000 people in one space, just all being processed on the server side, that is extremely impressive. They're yeah, saying millions. Yeah, I think it's millions. Age of Ascent because it's got uh, millions. space battles. Yes, and they have officially said millions of players without instancing, without different shards, like all there. Like you could put I, them I mean, all in one place and it would be okay. You, you say millions, right? But that's, that's what they said. <laughs> in in terms of... Well, I was saying, is it going to be like No Man's Sky, though, where they're all spread out across an infinite galaxy, and so the chances of them actually being near each other is no, slim? No, no. Like, because that's another side of the... I mean, I mean it, it will be a, you know, a galaxy, don't get me wrong, and it will be massive, and it will be huge according to the developers, um, mm -hmm. but they're looking for, uh, like, uh, clans or, or war bands to form up and, and uh, you know, alliances and coalitions to be formed. And so you will have these massive battle fleets uh, going through space, conquering planets, you know, fighting each other for resources, for trade. Uh, you know, it, it, it's kind of like an all-in-one. You know, you're going to have your trade. You're going to have your research advancement, which is part of the MMO aspect. Uh, you can just have a massive army of live players. Uh, and you can build, uh, you build your ships pretty much with materials that you either farm or or trade for and i'm sure that um they'll have you know um mining vessels or things of that nature that will increase the yield or or auto mine for you at some point in time but that'd be down a tech tree right mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think the uh, the idea is pretty interesting. How it's just like an open world sandbox game that can handle a million players. But I mean, when we really come down to it, how many MMOs actually exceed the right. one million player mark? I mean, there's maybe like what four. Right. <laughs> so, I, I mean, more realistically, the this game will be handling maybe tens of thousands of people, uh, unless it becomes like. You know, as popular as Minecraft, all of a sudden, and millions of players start working on, or start playing on it. But I highly doubt that's going to happen unless they appeal to the, you know, the five-year-old crowd or the ten-year-old crowd. And if there's more gamers that are not young people. Right, but older gamers usually know what they want, and they diversify into specific genres of video games. So you never actually have everyone coming in together playing one game. Right. And I mean, you just look at something like Battlefield and Call of Duty. It's like it, most people don't play both games. They're split into like one game or another. Right. Whereas but with Minecraft, there's only one kind of game, really. I mean, there's sure there's other games like Portal Knight or I don't know, other, other sandbox style games like that, but those aren't as popular. Sure, but what if you took Minecraft, right, gave it massive MMO sandbox world, updated the graphics, gave it, you know, where you can have an intergalactic empire, uh, FPS action, you know. I think that's part of the charm of Minecraft. You, you, that's what I'm saying. Dual Universe is offering a lot of different genres into one game. And that's I mean, what it, I think it, that part of what they're depends. banking on. They have to do it right, though, because just mashing together a bunch of stuff doesn't work a lot of times. Um, oh, agree. Like, you have to do it well. It's kind of like, um, what was that game? Uh, EVE Online. EVE Online has a, a first-person shooter that's associated with it in the same universe, kind of. But it was done horribly wrong. Dust exactly, or something exactly. Called Dust yeah, Dust, Dust 5, 514. Yeah. 514. It was horrible. Like as a first-person shooter, it, it felt terrible playing it, and it, it it never caught on. And the same way with um, what was that game? Uh, Robert Space Industries. What is it? What's that game? Star game Citizen. That Kickstarter. Yeah, Star Citizen. There we go. Um, so Star C Citizen, they demoed this like first-person shooter, like no gravity thing. Do you remember that? Like a few years ago. Mm -hmm. How you can sort of like everything starts floating and you're like jumping off walls and stuff and firing at the enemies. Right. Like that's cool. But then I'm wondering who, how many people are actually going to be playing that if it's just kind of an afterthought in the main game. I don't think, I don't think it's intended to be an afterthought. I think it's a, the concept is let's say, you know, you have a fleet and I have a fleet and, or a ship and you, or right, station. right. I mean, you're there's this massive outside battle going on at the same time, and for you to let's say I have the bigger ship, but for you to get the upper hand, you send in you know four boarding parties of marines and you knock out my shields. Now you have the upper <laughs> hand. <laughs> I, I mean, I I guess. So wait, are you saying that like kind of like FTL, where I can blow up your ship? But then you're on my ship, so you can take over my ship, even though your ship's dead? Yes, that can occur. <laughs> That's hilarious. But it's not like a, it's not like Star Trek teleportation. It's literally like a, a shuttlecraft, from my understanding. Mm. Like a, a Corvette-class uh, ship would actually you know, launch they, they from just, one to the other. I thought they just loaded into the ship like it was just like a loading screen, and they appeared in the ship. At like the docking bay or something. Uh, or is it seamless? Is it like you actually get into a shuttle, you fly in there? They're wanting dock. They're wanting to go seamless. Is what they're wanting to do. I think the problem is that it's going to be really difficult without there being somewhere a loading screen. Right. I, I, that's the dream for every game, right? Having no loading screens and which, everything's just seamless. You just walk anywhere. Which, that's which kind of hard to do. It is, but but what's really interesting is whenever two groups of ships meet that are going to fight, it kind of I, I, I'm apologizing on all the technical I don't know all the technical terms, but it kind of creates creates their own fine, shard. You know, it creates their own shard, and it loads it independent of everything else that's going on. So yeah, that makes sense. A lot I mean, of things no one else there, right? So right, it right. So that gives 
you know, all the computers a break, it gives the servers a break, and could they do like a seamless boarding in that manner? I think it's doable. I think it's possible. I just don't know if, if they'll be able, if they will do it or not. It, it, it's sort of their own instance by itself, right? We're talking about the uh, boarding in Star Citizen, right? Uh, yeah, ultimately, like like whenever your ships run into some, like into enemy ships, it, it kind of takes them uh, on a on a te technological aspect and it ships them into their separate uh, simplicity server and it says, "Here, you guys go, have fun." Yeah, there's like a little docking tube. I don't know how the portaling. You, you guys know what portaling is in games? How that would work? Like, uh, if there's a door, you can't nothing in the next room from you. You can't see anything until you open the door. So it, rent, it doesn't render it while the door's closed. I don't know how that would work on the spaceships, because you'd be flying around. And then when they load, are they going to load it before the door opens or after? It'll be its own separate shard. I think they could load it all, and it'd be okay. Then if you go into the ship, are they going to unrender your ship, even though there's things going on on it? It'd be, It'd be cool if you could if you could board and then you look out the window and you see the entire battle going on on the outside. That would be really cool. I don't know if they'll be able to do that though, because if there's so much going on outside, it's gonna detract from you need to shoot this guy and the other ship. Well, how much could be going on? You you can only control one ship at a time, right? So unless I know, but what if they're like, like really close, blowing each other up and exploding on you? Well, it, it it depends on the ships that you're using, right? What if you're what if you brought a destroyer class ship? You're gonna have what fifteen, twenty, thirty people just managing that one ship. Yeah. Well, not that bad. It's if... just two ships fighting. I think if if it gets to ridiculous, if you start having like a hundred ships, each of those ships has like a dozen people on board. That starts getting crazy. Yeah. I don't know if Star Citizen could handle that. I don't think so either. They're right. just not set up for that. Like. One destroyer is a lot. I think the this whole cloud processing thing will push MMOs beyond what they can do, but I think it's still in its infancy right now. There's very few games that can actually use it. Right. Like if if all the data and the processing isn't pushed to every person as just raw data, it's being processed by the server and then it's pushed out as just one stream. That would be amazing. Allows Baseball for a lot. Was. Yeah, it allows for a lot more things to occur. Yep. Um, so, like, it's basically like instead of like if you're playing World of Warcraft and you know you're in a raid with 25 people or whatever, you are receiving a signal of the positioning for each of those 25 people. So instead of doing that, have the server like pre-process everything and then render out like half the stuff and then send that stuff to you. So your computer isn't actually tracking all that stuff; it's just showing you what the server's processing. Right. That's just, I don't know, it's really interesting to think about, but I mean, the actual implementation of it is like probably a decade away at this point. <laughs> um, like that, that Age of Ascension thing that uh, Vector found is basically like a demo of what they can actually do. Even though that is a real game, it's out. You can play it right now, but yeah. So, um... Vector, what is your most anticipated game for the next year? Um, it was Mass Effect Andromeda. You know, it's in, also, another thing on it is it's in a different galaxy, so they're trying to cut out all the stuff you did as Shepard in the Milky Way. They're in Andromeda now. Well, I think that still exists in the <clears throat> uh, the timeline, though. Like It's, it's yeah, part just, of the um, universe's history. I guess history. they're distancing from all the previous store things, so they don't have as many... Chances of, hey, you met this character before. Oops, we used him again. And it's not um, how you played the game. Yeah, but I'd love to have Commander Shepard or any one of the other characters show <sighs> up. Like a dad, like Shepherd. Liara. I don't, yeah, I, sure. I'd love to see Liara like again, because Liara yeah, is exactly. Liara is yeah, canon. Liara's, she's so sexy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's going to happen. Again, I'm pretty sure they're shooting for it in the future, because... There is context where they refer to wait, wait, Commander wait, wait. Shepard. Well, can well, live for oh, yeah, yeah, years, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my mistake there, but but that's they, the thing I was gonna say. But is they are if there's a forward. character, it's her who's gonna get pulled through. Mm -hmm. Maybe Miranda because she's like um, genetically, altered, genetically or yeah, something. Yeah, genetically engineered. Um, 
something I've, I've brought up in a, in a previous podcast. Um, so it's the story for um, Mass Effect Andromeda is in the Andromeda Galaxy, of course, right? Yes, yeah. the name of the game. So yeah. <clears throat> it's interesting that we are now the outsiders kind of invading and trying to explore another galaxy. Where yes, the humanity's manifest destiny. So sure, yeah. Um, the character is Commander Ryder, and you have some kind of um, ship that you're taking there and exploring for humanity. I don't know if you're like taking everything over as an invader, or you're just mm-hmm. exploring and looking for life. Well, at, at the very least, you need resources, so you have to land on a planet and try <clears> to <throat> like mine something or farm something. And that's kind of yeah. like an invasion in some sense, right? I mean, if we had some people, like, in the, in the first series, the Reapers were the invaders from outside of our galaxy. And, well, technically they were made in our galaxy, but they were in hibernation outside the galaxy, just on the edge. Yeah, they so did, uh... in the new game, we kind of reverse positions. We are now the invaders, sort of, and the people that are living there are going to be looking at us like... Who the hell are these guys? Why are they like in our galaxy doing It's going to be on a different something? scale, though, because it's only... I don't know, because the game's not out and we don't know too much, but it's just, from mm-hmm. what I can see, one ship and Commander Ryder and her crew, or his crew, because, you know, characters. Pick yeah, them. but you remember the first two Mass Effect games, there was only one ship as well. I know, but, like, humanity's everywhere in those games, and here it's going to be all new, different races. I don't know how much you'll be seeing all the old races, like Aryans. Rogans. Unless they like mm-hmm. follow you unless or something. They, yeah, unless they came with you on the ship. But that's a, that's a giant ship. You the other thing like is a, there's not um I don't a giant like calling you ship. You think there would be a mass relay from the Milky Way to Andromeda? It's like galaxies away. I wonder uh, how they get there. I if anything we say right now is gonna be speculation. Yeah. So from the looks of from the look of the trailer, it didn't look that way because there is a scene at the end of one of the trailers where you see the ship kind of flying towards the galaxy and the galaxy is still kind of small yeah so it looks like they really just spent all the time flying there and i'm sure they probably built some kind of ftl drive that is like a hundred times faster but it would still take decades probably so kind of a generational ship maybe unless it's really just unless they put the ship into a gun and they shoot that ship oh, yeah, we are what galaxy. if the ship is just a giant mass relay and it just uses that uh... <laughs> well if the ship is a giant mass relay then it's basically like an FTL drive then right oh Wouldn't... my god just FTL drive oh I forgot <laughs> um, one thing is the reapers did have a mass relay out in dark space because the citadel is also a mass relay oh spoilers <laughs> that's right yeah I wonder mm-hmm. if they like get that back on and then it like takes them halfway or something. I don't know. They could also do just like a cryogenic sleep pod, right? Yeah. Boring though. Everyone you know is dead now. Congratulations. Oh gosh. <laughs> and um aside from the exploring, the uh there's a jetpacks in the game now. I wonder how they're updating the combat system because the other game's combat systems are getting a little dated, especially the first game. Have they given any details on what they're changing, or how they're um, modifying it or upgrading so it? So far there's only been like one leaked video of the jetpack actually being used. Don't play like, stories. There's not too much, there's just the one reveal trailer, and then that leaked gameplay. Yeah, I'm playing the, uh, the reveal trailer from EC 2015 right now. So, it's surprising that we haven't really seen much new information, like new, new like media, really, since the last E3. So I'm really hoping that they release something new, some new information this time. Also wondering, um, one of the things I really did not like about Mass Effect 3 is how they have day one DLC that cuts out a major character. I do not like that. What what what, what happened? I uh, played Mass Effect 3, so you know Javik the Prothean. The Protheans are the race that came before humanity, basically, that the Reapers wiped out. And he was a huge plot device, because, hey, this is a ancient alien that we can have help us. And they cut it out as a $10 DLC on day one. Yeah, that was kind of shy. Interesting. I, yeah, I actually 
I never played that because it was DLC, and I only watched uh, like videos of it online. Oh, the good parts at least. Did you actually buy it? Um, I actually didn't know about that until afterwards because I just bought the collector's edition because I do that. So I didn't find out that he was day one DLT DLC until I saw it on Total Biscuits channel like a month later. Why he didn't buy the game? I was oh, like, oh, that's dear scummy. Lord. Yeah, it's you know what it's it's I mean Bioware is owned by EA now, so EA yeah, makes a lot yeah. of stupid but fuck stupid decisions about everything. And I think people are just used to it at this point. They like when EA does something stupid, we all just like shake our heads and be like, okay, it's EA. We're kind of used to it. It's not even a shock to us anymore, right? <laughs> Talking about EA and stupid decisions, at one point in time they were uh looking at microtransactions in the Madden games where you could you would actually have to buy air to put in the football. <laughs> Wait, so would you still have to buy the game though or would the game be free to play? No, you'd you'd still pay like sixty bucks for the game. But if you wanted air in the ball for that game or season or whatever, you'd have to pay, you know, a microtransaction to make sure you keep Doesn't something make- any ball. sense but that's yeah. sort of like the uh, mobile mobile game style where it's but those hold on mobile games are free to play though where like um you know the mobile games where you have kind of an energy bar so you have like five points or ten points so you can right. do like five things and then you have to wait like i don't regenerates one point every 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever so you have to wait a couple hours for your points to regen before you can do something again or you can pay money microtransaction to refill that bar instantly yeah pay to save time so it, is it, it's kind of like that, right? Where it's like you can play like uh, uh, maybe two or three games, but then your ball slowly deflates after a certain amount and you have to refill <laughs> your ball to play well, like a fourth game or something. That sounds well, so dumb. No, no, that no, no, no. So dumb. You can still play the running joke whenever that, whenever that was leaked is that, well, ho- hope that your team has a strong running game, right? <laughs> That's ridiculous. So it, it basically you're saying it affects... Anything, it just decreases the range. Like you can't throw it as far, you can't kick it as far. Right, it wouldn't be as accurate. Like it, that's every, terrible. Go, go and try to play football with a deflated football. Man. I wonder it if there's like a two dollar transaction that's for like a helium inflated ball, and it goes farther. <laughs> that would be amazing. Pay to like, win, right there. It would just they be would like every time you, you play online, and anytime you touch the ball. It's helium inflated, and anytime your opponent touches the ball, it's a regular ball. So you, your ball just goes further. <laughs> that's just that's pay to win right there. And this channel is actually play to win, so we are against that policy. Pay to save time, but I don't pay to win. Pay to save time. Well, play to win does save you time, though, right? Uh. Some people have more money than time, and some people have more time than money. And some people have more money than sense. 